Good evening and welcome to 60 Minutes. I'm Tara Brown. Tonight, in a joint investigation with the Sydney Morning Herald and The Age, we're going to expose a very dubious global financial scheme. And it's one that's happening right now. There are hundreds of Australian families, thousands around the world, caught up in it. But even worse, there are also many victims who don't know their life savings are missing. All up, the total losses could be in the billions of dollars. Now, you might be asking, how do we know all of this? Well, quite extraordinarily, one of the key players involved has decided to confess. And after authorities hear what Chris Ridgway has to say to reporter Adele Ferguson, a prison cell might be his next home. black Porsche is supposed to make him look successful. But the truth is, Chris Ridgway's spoils are ill-gotten. He's a con man, plain and simple. Has my hair and makeup pour up? Tonight, though, he's about to do something highly unusual. He's going to confess. Do you think you're a crook? I don't want to think of myself as a crook, but some of my actions in recent times have been terribly unlawful. Um, and I'm ashamed and I'm, I'm sorry and I have no self-respect or no self-worth. I struggle to look at myself in the mirror. For years, Chris Ridgway was employed at one of Australia's biggest and most reputable financial broking houses, Shore & Partners. He was a respected and trusted senior advisor which made it easy for him to dupe his clients and friends out of their savings. But now, he wants us to believe he's a con with a conscience. I don't, I haven't done too much to make me a trustworthy person, but I'm here today because my life is at rock bottom. I'm trying, I'm trying to tell people I'm sorry. I'm trying to be honest with myself. To prove his remorse, Chris Ridgway has agreed to expose a global financial scheme that's still operating right now. He's promised to tell the truth about his role in it, how his clients were impacted and how many of them were left destitute. It's catastrophic. It, it, it affects what you can do, what you can't do, what you, the time you spend with your family. In terms of our overall life, yeah, massive impact. Yep. And it's lost me my uh, trust of the financial system. How big do you think it is? How big it is? We're looking at about five and a half billion dollars US. That's not a small amount of money. As you'll see, people all around the world have been lured into the scheme. And it's like not only the loss of their savings that hurts, but also the embarrassment they feel because the truth was so simple. Chris Ridgway and many other advisors like him used their positions to convince investors to buy financial products that had no real value. I know that now, but I didn't think that that was the case when I started. Do you honestly think they're a con now? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're a con now. But Chris Ridgway isn't going down quietly. He wants to name names. He says the masterminds of the dubious investment scheme are these men. British-based Andy Turner and Australian David Sutton. Both are well known to financial authorities for the wrong reasons. 
Yeah, I've, I've owned some, some fantastic cars over the years. The Turner, for his links to a failed English bank called First London, and Sutton, who among other suspicious deals, has been associated with dodgy North Korean mining companies. Those two people are the ones that we need to find out where the money's gone from. They try desperately to avoid phone calls and any contact with shareholders or anybody else. Ridgway says his role was as a middleman. If he signed up investors to Turner and Sutton's scheme, he'd be rewarded with lucrative secret kickbacks. And by pushing the lie that his employer, Shore and Partners, endorsed the deals, his unsuspecting clients couldn't wait to sign up. You did it off the books? Yep. Did you know that was wrong? I knew it was wrong. Um, they said, we'll pay you a decent commission. And, you know, I, I guess I was, I was greedy and I was desperate for money and I made a decision to, you know, let them sway me. I figured, well, bugger it, you know, um, I'm going to do something for myself and um, it was a wrong decision to make. It's illegal for financial advisers to take secret commissions, but Ridgway did it anyway. We can't be sure if he's telling the whole truth or not, but even still, he admits to taking $1.6 million in kickbacks, which he spent on flash cars and lavish overseas holidays. Of course, his clients had no idea their savings were supporting his extravagant lifestyle. So he never said he was getting a commission? No, no, that was never divulged. Um, and it's not just your standard commission, it's a massive commission that's been found that he was pocketing. Yeah, I guess you get paid well to do dodgy stuff. Unlike Chris Ridgway's wheels, Leith Reynolds' car isn't about showing off. She's supposed to be retired, but thanks to her once trusted financial advisor, she needs it for work. Did you anticipate that you would be couriering no. at this time? No. No, that definitely wasn't in my plan. Leith has known Ridgeway for 30 years. What's this And this is here? a photograph taken at Mark's funeral. He was a close friend of her husband, Mark, even a pallbearer when he died. So at that stage, she was very much a trusted member of our friendship group. Like to but as she true. grieved, it's clear Ridgeway saw an opportunity and a target. It's horrible to think he was grooming me from then. Um, but he would have been aware that I would have some sort of insurance payout, um, I'm sure. In 2016, in the Brisbane offices of the prestigious Shore and Partners, Ridgway proposed a plan to improve Leith's financial security. He told her he knew a stock that was about to list on an overseas exchange, and if she got in early, she'd make a fortune. It wasn't like we'd met at a hotel somewhere over a beer and he'd said, hey, I've got a good deal here. No, I was in the office of, you know, a huge national company, a respected company. He was a senior advisor. If you can't trust a senior advisor in a national company, then to help you with your finances, who can you? And um, clearly I needed help. Money was short, but Leith handed over the last $20,000 from her late husband's life insurance. That wasn't enough, however, for Ridgeway. He rang me and he said, are you sure you haven't got any more money? This is just such a good deal. He told me he'd invested his whole inheritance in it. And he convinced me to transfer, I think, about $20,000 out of my super fund as well, um, which wasn't full of money. Being a stay-at-home mum, had very mostly, had, didn't, wasn't exactly flush with money. But he um, plundered it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a while, Leith believed her investment was a winner. Regular communication, seemingly sent from Shoreham Partners, 
showed a paper profit almost too good to be true. We'd get the reports of what the shares were now worth, which is what kept us all there probably, kept us all quiet. What was he telling you it was going to increase to? What would oh, that 40000 turn into? At the highest, about $1.6 I think, or $1.5 million. They were good quality documents with lots of detail. With Unsuspecting clients like Lease were lambs to the slaughter when confronted with Ridgeway's fast talking and the polished marketing props provided by Andy Turner and David Sutton. The reality was the stocks they'd been assured were about to list never did meaning their investments were worthless. As you can see, they are quite prolific in their production of information. So it was a sophisticated scam. Very sophisticated, you know, when they... Believe him or not, Chris Ridgway says when he first got involved with the scheme, he thought it was legitimate. But by the time he started having doubts, it was too late. Because you're in so deep, uh, you don't really know what else to do, you know? So you, you kind of just cling on to these ideas that it's all going to be fine and people are going to go make money and you stick your head in the sand and eventually it doesn't work anymore. Were you living a double life? In the world of financial services, trust is everything. Senior advisor and stockbroker Chris Ridgway breached that trust when he sold investors shoddy products that were worthless and then strung them along for years. Now, before the authorities knock on his door, he's offering up a grovelling mea culpa. Do you understand that you've hurt a lot of people? Yes, I do. And I'm sorry. All right, let's go. We'll go see Daddy, hey? Hello, mate. Hello. Baby boy. The monetary damage Ridgeway has caused can be counted in the millions. But what's immeasurable is the emotional harm he's also inflicted. See you week, mummy. See you soon, OK? Darren and Kim Walker used to be happily married. But they say Chris Ridgeway put an end to that. Our life was on hold for years and the impact that that had on our marriage and then obviously our children and the life that we were living. The couple is now divorced, but remain united in their determination to expose what Ridgeway did to them. Oh, he got one. A sham, a big global sham um, and probably one of the biggest, I think, in terms of the firms involved that I've certainly said, heard or seen in Australia to date. We just thought we were doing the right thing, investing in a company and, you know, investing with someone that we thought was legitimate. The Walkers' ordeal began eight years ago when they invested $200,000 in financial products spruiked by Ridgeway. Like others, he gave them an early tip on a stock that was about to list on an international exchange. Trust me, the listing is imminent, Ridgway assured them. You're going to make a lot of money. Darren and Kim took the bait. But now, eight years later, the stock still hasn't listed. It was like your life was on hold for years because you're waiting for the six, year, the six weeks or the three months or whatever and then making plans and trying to do things like that because you'd ask them all the way to the end. You know, is this really going to happen? Yeah, 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 it's going to happen. At first, they believed the excuses Chris Ridgway was spinning about the delays. And the reason for that? They trusted him because he was employed by Shore & Partners. Chris worked for one of the biggest firms in Australia and, and um, you know, by all means seemed to know what he's talking about. So I thought, well, in terms of risk, that is a, a good way to go. When did you realise something fishy was going on? So it would have been around probably 2019 was when I started to think there's just something not right that's going on here. And, and so I started to look a lot deeper. And the more I dug, the more I found. 
Darren's detective work was complicated and exhaustive. He became an expert on shelf companies, overseas tax havens and compliance failures, the scale of which was breathtaking. He discovered that one of the companies he'd invested in, the Australian registered Alt Financial Group, which was supposed to list but didn't, had also been making extraordinary boasts without any backup. There was a four or five billion dollar unlisted public company in Australia who had two directors, no central office with the people you think you need to run a five billion dollar company. They never had an annual general meeting. They never put out audit accounts since 2017. As it became clear to Darren and Kim Walker, their money was gone. How are you going, Jason? Hello, mate. Hey. It also became obvious they were far from alone. Oh, yes, that's probably all of them. We've suffered enormously, because there's elements of this that we'll never get back. You know, the emotion, the stress, the ripped our family apart. You're, you, no amount of money can ever replace that. Like the Walkers, Jason Herman's financial future has been destroyed by Chris Ridgway. Back in 2015, he made a wise decision to give up motorcycle racing to spend more time with his family. But then he made a dreadful decision by asking his racing mate Ridgway for advice about wealth creation. So I went and saw him in his office at Shaw and Partners. Obviously, Sean Partners are highly reputable and uh, their presence is far and wide. So the two of them, to me, seemed like a perfect opportunity. Ridgeway's pitch to Jason was slick and full of promise, an offer to buy shares at a discounted price before the stock was listed. Jason didn't know it then, but Ridgeway was secretly profiting from an elaborate and highly dubious deal, allegedly engineered by Englishman Andy Turner and Australian David Sutton. Well, yeah. Jason paid his money and for the first few years, on paper at least, watched his $200,000 investment balloon. I mean, I had a statement of advice from Shaw's that suggested the shares were north of $2 million. Early on, it was happy days, but as time passed, he realised his shares were really worth nothing because despite repeated assurances it was about to happen, the stock wasn't ever listed on an exchange. At that point in time, I thought, this is never coming to pass. This appears to be fraudulent. By early last year, Jason Herman was so fed up with Chris Ridgway's lies and excuses, he gave him an ultimatum. Pay back the money, or he complained to Ridgway's bosses at Shore and Partners. Ridgway panicked. You tried to convince him not to? Yeah, I did. Because of the fear and of what was going to happen to me. Not whether it was right or wrong, but what was going to happen to me. I just ran out of patience. So I sat down on a Sunday night and it took me about four or five hours because I had to start from the beginning again, right back to 2015 in my complaint to Shaw's. So it was almost like some type of significant crime had been committed and you'd just turned up at the police station. It's like, help. You stick your head in the sand and Eventually, it doesn't work anymore. You know, and that's what it got to, you know, in February last year. The music stopped. The music stopped. Chris Ridgway's scam was finally exposed, as was the true extent of his greed. And as you'll see, not only was he prepared to rip off his clients, his wife and children weren't spared either. I just would like to see him stop hiding and stop lying. Disgraced financial advisor Chris Ridgway says he's now filled with regret about his role as a middleman 
in a global scheme that's destroyed so many investors. I was arrogant and stupid and up myself and I said, I'll fix this, no problems. I've done this before, I can fix it. The reality is he, he was integral to it. When one of his and furious clients, Jason Herman, told Ridgeway's bosses at Shuram Partners what their senior advisor had been up to, the company was quick to act. Ridgeway was questioned, then sacked. Did anyone at Shaw know what was going on? No. No. So how did you, for seven years, dupe the compliance system? I told the clients what I was told, so they felt as though they were having an investment continued to be more and more prosperous. Um, I didn't make the decision to tell my compliance department or my estate manager or um, the CEO. But the deception wasn't just directed at his clients. Carolyn Ridgway is Chris's wife and mother of his three children. Married for 35 years, she's mortified by her husband's actions. It's like a nightmare, you know? It's the worst thing that has ever happened to me. And it's happened, it's been done by the person that I trusted most in the world. And, you know, there's, there's almost decades worth of lies and betrayal. And for what? The stay-at-home mum learned the truth when Shuram Partners sent her a text message saying they'd sacked her husband. We were just blown away, completely blindsided. What happened next? My eldest daughter was very upset and she said, what have you done, what have you done? And, you know, we just got a text and I think we read out some of what was in it to him and um, he just said, oh, they don't understand my business model. Um, and he just, I just remember him just turning and walking out, and that was it. He just walked out? Just walked out, yeah. I was so ashamed, I wanted to hide and run away and try and sort this matter out and then come back. And, you know, I was really just thinking about myself and not the well-being of my family and my kids. And it's devastated my kids, and it's devastated my wife. Ridgeway wants us to believe he's remorseful. But leaving his family high, dry and penniless might also have had something to do with his fear that Carolyn would discover another betrayal. For years, Ridgeway had been forging her signature on financial documents. There were hundreds of signatures that weren't mine and it went back to 2008 and that was probably the most shocking part of it all is that there'd been 15 years of him signing things and, and using my name for things that I was completely unaware of. This here, are these some of the signatures you're talking about? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and that's not my signature. That's one of many that I've seen. And there's, you know, companies that I'm sole director on that I'd never even heard of. You forged her signature probably a hundred times yep. on documents. Yep. Did you know it was illegal? Yep. But you did it anyway. Yeah. And you put her into companies as a director that she had no idea about. Yep. Yep. Because I was too stupid to tell her about it. Which way sacking and subsequent media attention in the Sydney Morning Herald and The Age exposed a multi-billion dollar scandal that's gone on for years and continues to this day. It's a spider web of companies. Most of them are registered all over the world in different countries. Total, total balance sheet that I could calculate is about 6.7 billion Australian dollars. Stephen Helberg has an impressive CV. He's a trained auditor with 40 years experience and has held senior roles at corporate giants including Rio Tinto, Orica and Ernst & Young. In 2016, he was approached by the men Chris Ridgway has named as the masterminds of the scheme, David Sutton and Andy Turner. They asked Stephen to join their enterprise. They wanted credibility. They need the credibility in order to 
entice and convince investors to invest in these shell companies. Helberg was hired to run a company called Oz Streaming Investments, a proposed mining venture that at first appeared good on paper. But he soon realised he too had been duped. The business had no cash and he couldn't trace the assets that supposedly sat on its balance sheet. The asset value in the balance sheet was $138 million Australian at the time. And as I progressed and realised about six months later that this is an actually, there's nothing to the assets that they've actually uh, reported in the balance sheet, I started to un unravel and untangle where the inter uh, holdings are the cross holdings. It certainly wasn't what Stephen Helberg was employed to do, but he worked out that Oz Streaming Investments was tangled up with a staggering number of equally questionable companies. On paper, these businesses appeared to be worth in excess of six billion dollars, but the wily auditor smelt a very grubby rat. So. That's when I, I, I contacted the external auditors next year and they confirmed that they relied on uh, independent valuations that were provided by Andrew Turner. And it turned out that uh, those valuations were not independent. They did not comply with the accounting standards and they were uh, prepared by David Sutton. With confirmation there were serious irregularities in the company's valuations, Helberg quit in 2017 and called in his lawyers. At the time, he was owed $250,000 in salary as well as millions of dollars in shares. Needless to say, he's still waiting for the money. Looking back, he wishes he'd never met Andrew Turner or David Sutton or become involved with what he now believes is a highly questionable scheme with many victims. It is probably the most sophisticated chair scheme that I've seen in my life. How many investors do you think there are? I suspect 2,000 plus people have been scammed into this, maybe more. Is it a get-rich-quick scheme, a Ponzi scheme, or a scam? Yeah, it's not a Ponzi scheme. If it's a Ponzi scheme, at least somebody along the way would have been paid. Nobody gets their money back. So we can cross that out. Is it a scam? Is it a quick-rich scam? No, it, it was well-planned, well-executed and orchestrated uh, in multiple jurisdictions uh, with legal entities it takes money, time, and know-how to actually do all of that. So I think it's a well-planned, sophisticated global scheme to defraud investors. 60 Minutes has obtained this report by PricewaterhouseCoopers. It reveals how they were appointed as a liquidator to find the assets of Ozstreaming Limited. But after a year of searching trawling through records and visiting offices that had been left vacant, it couldn't find that the company had anything of value. It did, however, establish that David Sutton and Andrew Turner were central to the scheme. The authors of the PricewaterhouseCoopers report also called on the financial regulator ASIC to investigate suspicions that Oz Streaming may be involved in misleading and deceptive conduct. But Stephen Helberg says ASIC needs to do much more than that. The scam continues as you and I sit here today and the regulator allows that to happen. They should at least stop it. For his involvement, Chris Ridgway is now a very worried man. And as you'll see, so he should be. I may end up being charged with fraud and I may end up going to jail over this. In Australia, Chris Ridgway signed up almost a hundred unsuspecting investors to what he knew was a highly questionable global financial scheme. By his own admission, he profited to the tune of $1.6 million, but the millions more his clients invested is now missing. 
Ridgeway claims he doesn't know what's happened to the money, although he says others likely do. I know that David Sutton would know exactly where the money's gone. So I think, you know, that's a good question for you to ask David Sutton if you ever get the opportunity, you know, where's the money gone? David Sutton lives in a wealthy suburb on Sydney's northern beaches. But when I visited, he didn't answer the door. David Sutton, it's Adele Ferguson from 60 Minutes. A few minutes later, his phone also went unanswered. He finally responded via text. Adele, my legal advice is not to speak to the media. We also tried to ask Sutton's business partner in England, Andy Turner, if he knew what had happened to the money. But he wasn't talking either. Mr Turner? But yesterday, Turner sent a statement denying any wrongdoing. Not surprisingly, Chris Ridgway desperately wants and needs Turner and Sutton to explain themselves, but he isn't holding his breath waiting. They have hung me out to dry. I've been the full person in all of this. They're twiddling their thumbs, happy as Larry, and they've done nothing to help me at all. The intermediaries, they get paid a whole pocket full of commission, so why, why would the they The people care? who trusted their money with Ridgeway have no sympathy for him. They know with near certainty their investments are worthless. But what's important to them now is getting answers about how this scheme was ever allowed to happen. And where's the money gone? That's the multi-million dollar question. Well, we know where the money's where's gone. Where's the money gone? <laughs> but, but right under the nose of ASIC, all the time they've been operating like this. Understandably, they say financial regulator, the Australian Securities and Investments Commission, needs to bear some responsibility. After all, its role is to protect consumers. It's time to get off your butts and be the, the corporate threat that you're supposed to be to stamp this out and to look after the little guys like us who have no help and um, no one looking out for us at all. These people, these directors who have set up the various entities that we've invested in, they've been doing this for years. I'm quite sure they're planning their next company to launch. It's got to be stopped. They've got to be stopped. Former Senator John Williams, who's been trying to help the investors who've lost their money, is a long-time critic of ASIC. He accuses it of being ineffectual. If you ask me what's the definition, definition of frustration, I would say ASIC. They are the definition of frustration. I had 11 years trying to get them to act, trying to get them to become a fearless cop on the beat, and all for nothing. What message does it send to crooks when ASIC doesn't act? Free for all. Have no fear in doing the wrong thing. We can siphon off commissions, break the law, siphon money, have no respect for the person we're, whose money we're investing for them because there, there's no fear of punishment. After years of deceit, finally coming clean to his clients and even his wife and children has probably been Chris Ridgway's only option. What has to be worked out now is the price he needs to pay for the enormous trail of destruction he's caused. What do you think's gonna happen? I don't think I'll ever be able to be a uh, financial advisor again. Um, I may not be able to be a company director. I may end up being charged with fraud and I may end up going to jail over this. What does that do, thinking about that you might go to jail? I'm terrified. I'm terrified. I may end up being the exact opposite of what I've tried to do in my life. and and have criminal charges and go to jail, and I'm horrified. I'm horrified. He says he's sorry for his actions. Do you believe him? I don't know. I, you know, I spoke to him at Christmas time, and I was prepared to listen to what he had to say, and he came back and he told my children and um, myself that, you know, he was really sorry and that he wanted to fix things, and... Um, then I found out afterwards that 
he was having an affair with somebody else. So it was just a second level of betrayal and lies. So I, I don't know the answer to that. What would you say to your wife and your kids? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm trying to own it. I'm trying to fix things. I'm sorry. I really am sorry. I didn't mean this to happen. I just wanted us to have a good life. And I'm embarrassed. I'm sorry. <laughs> Chris Ridgway's former employer, Shaw and Partners, says he deliberately circumvented the company's compliance procedures to deceive them. In some welcome news for the clients, though, Shaw's says it's working to compensate the impacted parties. And last Thursday, there was also some long-awaited action from the regulator. After ASIC became aware this story was about to be broadcast, it announced it was permanently banning Chris Ridgway from any involvement in financial services. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.